In the beginning of July, we were contacted by the Gardaí. It was John Byrne and said that he was interested in us running some mitochondrial sequencing on a historic person in Ireland whose uh, uh, grave had been found. At the, at the time we called it Mr X, but uh, uh, then he disclosed some information uh, of who it might be, which is uh, Thomas Kent. And uh, he was a rebel back in 1916. He was caught by the British and executed. He was buried in a very shallow grave in Cork Prison and his remains were found in uh, 2015 in June. Then later I met with the Garda and they told me the relationship between Thomas Kent and living relatives and there were only two uh, nieces that they had blood samples from. And our task was then to compare the DNA with Thomas Kent. When you die and your body starts decaying, so does the DNA. So it decays very rapidly down to small, small, small fragments. So when Thomas Kent was executed, afterwards they threw him in a shallow grave and then they put quicklime on top of it. And that might have helped us in this case because it might have tried out the bones. And by taking away the humidity, we preserve the DNA much better. Without the quicklime, we might have not been able to find any DNA at all. So on the UCD side, this is a, a big collaboration between two lab groups. Ron Pinhasi group, which are experts on getting ancient DNA, and we are Area 52, and Area 52 is population genetics, so we have more of the statistical skill sets. So we were geneticists working with archaeologists, and those were archaeologists working with geneticists. So it was a, a nice mixture, because they were doing DNA already. We weren't really doing archaeological stuff, but we were doing a lot of genetics. This material kind of takes on a bit of a, a new approach for us because it's only uh, the ancient material here is about 100 years old. Um, so this is uh, a little bit more, more modern than what we're used to working with. Over the last couple years, um, our group has looked at the Petrus bone um, really in depth and determined that it is the best part of the whole skeleton to uh, get ancient DNA from. You get the highest endogenous yield which just means you get the most DNA from the individual you're targeting. So we take all the precautions that we can in our ancient DNA lab to, to uh, lower the risk of contamination as much as possible. We end up wearing um, protective gear. Uh, we change our gloves. We're wearing hair nets, face masks. Um, we're also cleaning everything with bleach, UVs as much as we can. And this helps us lower the risk of contaminating uh, our ancient samples with our own DNA. So we ended up trying a new technology, or it's quite recent technology. It's called the MySeq, which is a next generation sequencer. Now we have the three samples. We have Thomas Kent or Mr. X, as we call them, and we have the two nieces. That meant we got three different tests as well. The first test was between the two sisters, second test between sister one and Mr. X, and the third test between sister two and Mr. X. And then we estimated the degree of relatedness between these individuals. By doing that, we can uh, be quite sure, or very, very sure in this case, that Thomas Kent has a relatedness to the siblings, which is consistent with being an uncle, not consistent with being unrelated. So we are very, very happy with those results, and uh, we feel very sure about them. We got more from the Thomas Kent affair, if you want to call it that, than just identification. We have now developed methods that can be used for archaeologists. We can now uh, reconstruct uh, uh, dynasties and things like that. As long as we have access to, to, to more than one person's uh, remains. Next generation sequencing has really revolutionized the field of ancient DNA in archaeology.